Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by TrueLearn. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you'd prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone and the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We'll collect these and add them during the Q&A portion. A recording of today's presentation will be sent out to all registrants via email within 24 to 48 hours. I would now like to introduce our presenters from the MidFlash Go podcast team, Dr. Taylor Branagh, Sean D'Angelo, and Royce Copeland. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm Taylor, I'm one of the uh, members of the MedFlash Go team. I'm one of the co-founders. Um, and uh, today we're gonna be talking about a really important topic. Uh, I'm really excited to have Sean and Royce with us and um, they just matched. So it's, it's really amazing to see that. And um, if there's anything to say, it's uh, when you trust the process and when you go through it properly, and when you take all those right steps, um, there is, ideally a light at the end of the tunnel and there is um, something better waiting. So, um, you know, we're all really passionate about teaching. We're here to really serve uh, anyone listening now or if you watch this later and uh, we're like really excited for this topic. So um, this topic is a combination of a few things that we're gonna discuss, but the overarching picture is not how do you, not the how of boards, it's not like, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not the what of boards. It's not the why of boards. It's kind of the how. How are you gonna do the little incremental things and the pieces in between? The what, you know what you're doing, right? At this point, you've probably designed your schedule. You've done a lot of these important pieces. You've thought about those resources. You know why you're taking this exam, right? You probably know when you're taking the exam. Ideally, at this point, you should have probably scheduled that. But what we're gonna talk about is the how. The, the little, those little pieces in between. And so the first thing we kind of want to bring up in this discussion, um, we're going to go over briefly the little pieces that should have already taken place by now. It's March 23rd, so ideally there's, there's little things that should have been taken care of. We're, we already touched on this before, but we just want to do a little bit of a review. So in regards to kind of the practical things, um, I'm just going to go over a few of the steps that should have already happened. Ideally, you should have already set your date for your exam. You should have set up your schedule. Um, and we'll kind of talk about the schedule piece in more detail. That's going to be the, the how. Um, and then you're going to want to have already selected the resources that you will ideally be using. Um, if you have any questions on that, we can definitely address that at the end. And again, we're kind of going to go over those like lifestyle pieces. Okay. So the overarching topic we want to hit first and discuss is how do you balance the board studying with coursework? So guys, I'm just gonna kind of make it really open-ended, um, but for both Sean, let, we'll start with uh, Sean just cause I see him first on my screen here, and then we'll hop over to Royce. But for both Sean and Royce, how did you guys, what was your overarching strategy? Um, and then we'll, again, we'll dig into little pieces. What was your overarching strategy for balancing coursework and what was your thought process while also uh, co-committantly thinking about boards? Uh, Sean, I think you're on mute. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yep. So really, uh, you know, my approach was, you know, kind of tri trial and error. And the way I went at it was do my coursework, you know, kind of stick with my plan that I had created. And then really just if I, you know, I think I mentioned this before, but, you know, if I had gotten a poor grade on something, then you kind of just adjust, right? You do a little bit less of the board studying and a little bit more of the grades just to help boost that up or, you know, vice versa, too. If, uh, you know, if you're you're doing well in class and then you see that you're getting a little bit lower, or maybe you're plateauing in your, uh, you know, your question sets, then you can spend a little bit more time and dedicate a little bit more time in the board studying. So I, you know, that was really just my approach, just go through it and, you know, adapt and be flexible as you go forward. You know, the, the macro, the macro structure can still be rigid, but that micro schedule can, can be flexible. Royce, what do you think? Yeah, Sean made all great points. I, uh, 
kind of my approach during this time period, especially the spring when you're still learning new material for med school, but you kind of still need to start studying for boards. My approach was focus on as much of the material at school. So for us, it was neuro at this time. So I knew if I knew as much neuro at this time, that's less time I have to focus on neuro when it comes to boards. And then when I was studying for my board material on the back side, it'd be information that I already learned in the past to kind of like kind of refresh the memory. So that was my approach when I was going forward. So like whatever subject we were learning in school, approach that for the boards and learn it as well as you can there. So you don't have to relearn it when it comes back for board studying again. So um, if I'm hearing this correctly, Sean, for you, you kind of like titrated, right? You're like, okay, I'm not doing as well in class. Let's bump up the classwork. And then, um, oh, I'm not doing as well with the boards. I'll bump up that. So you kind of switched around. Did, um, and then Royce, for you, you did it kind of in combination. So correct me if I'm wrong. So when you were on neuro, did you focus on the neuro section of your boards and your question banks? I did. So I focused on neuro questions and, and that information, but I didn't get down to the nitty gritty details. If something was presented in neuro in a class, I'd kind of just focus on the big topics, big concepts and stuff like that that'd be tested on boards. Uh, Sean, did you, did you, um, like, for example, if you were on neuro, did you study for neuro for boards or did you go out of order? I went out of order. I basically, uh, I basically, at that point I was doing systems because this was around, I don't know, I want to say like February. Uh, and I was going through my systems and, you know, neuro was in there, uh, but uh, I kind of did my own thing and, and studied neuro you know, later in the day, just kind of on top of on top of the board study. Right. So you kept you kept it separate. Um, and so I think I just want to point that out to people. There is no right way to to owning the boards or doing really well on the boards. the The best way is the way that you've been doing it and what makes for what sense for, what makes sense for you. At the end of the day, it's about your performance on the exam. And um, I would argue, and again, it just depends on the type of learner and, and a performer that you are. I would argue at this time, it's okay if your classwork or your grades in your classes drop a little bit. And I think, it, I think it's, it's all right if you're not getting those A's or you know, like high B's or whatever. Obviously, if you're dropping into like the 70s or into a an area where you're nervous about passing, that's a little bit of a different story. But if you're generally performing well and your scores drop a little bit, that's fine. Because at the end of the day, and I'll tell you this with 100% certainty, there's gonna be zero, and I mean absolutely zero programs that are gonna ask you why your neuro grade in, uh, on the first exam was poor. No one, no one cares, um, and that's just the truth. Like Sean Royce, has anyone asked you about a specific score or test grade that you had in med school? No, no, no not at all. <laughs> yeah, no one cares, okay? And that's the honest truth. And I wanna be real with you guys because I think a lot of people will micro worry about these exams you're taking. That doesn't matter. What we care about in regards to residency programs is did you get through your classwork? Did you do well on your clinical rotations? And have you passed boards? After that, it's differentiating the experiences, the personality, how did you do on the rotation? Did you shadow? all those amazing things. So let's put it into the bigger overarching picture, which is past class, past boards, okay? All right, and ideally perform well so you know your stuff and so when you go on your clinical rotations, you're showing, you're showing off, not in a pompous way, but in the way that you know your stuff, okay? Um, and again, I just wanna make it really clear because at the end of the day, it's really just about being a, a competent physician. So I don't want you guys to be scared if uh, you went from being an 85 or 90 or 95 student to a 75. Zero people care. So I just, again, I just really want to harp on this because um, there's a lot of anxiety in med school. And I just want to, I want you to realize that those little pieces that you might be so anxious about really aren't important. What's important is that you pass this exam and ideally perform well. So you'll be prepped for your next steps and next, next exams as you move forward. Um, I hope that cleared up how like the general approaches of this thing. We're gonna go into a lot more detail about like lifestyle stuff, uh, social decisions, family stuff, all these little pieces that we might not think about. Um, but if you have any questions on, on that piece of sort of dealing with the coursework 
um, and then also simultaneously saying for boards. We're gonna get in a little bit more detail now. Um, so I know we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but uh, to Sean and to Royce, we'll kind of go in the order again. Um, actually, let's start with Royce this time. Um, Royce, in terms of scheduling, because you can't do both at the same time, although you kind of did, did you have a specific way of setting up your schedule to tackle classwork first and then switch over to ports? Uh, yeah, so I'm a little. I'm not really a morning person per se. Um, so I did my stuff more in the evening and like later at night, and that's when I function best. So I started like the morning of. I'd wake up, eat breakfast, and then I would actually review my board re my board review notes from the previous day to kind of freshen up. And then during like midday. I would study for my class. So if we were learning neuro, that's the last subject we learned. I would study all neuro, three, four hours, doing the lectures, focusing, like pretending that's my boards. I was reading for even for boards. And then I would take a break, do something miscellaneous, and then I would study for boards, like doing my systems. And then I would do that for a time, take a break for an hour, and then do more board study until like midnight, and then repeat the cycle for three to four months. So how, how late would you study? Like how late would you stay up sometimes? Um, honestly, I would stay up till like 12 to one. I, once I started getting past the two range, I wouldn't like really function as well, but that 12 to one range was like the perfect timing for me. Yeah, and, and the reason I'm bringing that up is like that would absolutely not work for me. Like <laughs> that, would ex that would exhaust me the next day. Um, and, and so I, you know, everyone's a little bit different in, in regards to like when their peak times are. So like, I just don't wanna, I wanna highlight that, like how you're gonna manage this is gonna look different. So like, Sean, what was that for you? Yeah, for me, uh, I knew that if I studied something first thing in the morning or right after I woke up, uh, I would, you know, retain it better. If that was my learning uh, period, it was the morning. And then as the day went on, I would, I felt like I wouldn't retain or, or learn a concept as well. So. I would prioritize my day uh, with learning new material in the morning and then more testing towards later in the day. Uh, and testing I also refer to as you know doing note cards as well. Uh, and you know, so if I really want to learn a new concept, I would I prioritize that from the morning. Uh, and you know, we were lucky that we we were able to have our classes all online. And you know, we we could have that type of schedule where I, you know, I can educate myself to do board studying in the morning and then have lunch afterwards get back to it and then uh you know my day would end around six you know i work i go to the gym have dinner and then you know go head back home and and start it over again at you know six or seven in the morning and you know that's really how my my day was kind of structured and we were fortunate and you know and this is this is a great thing that we're bringing up now you know lifestyle and how to adjust with your your class schedule because we were lucky that we were able to have all our classes online and you know we can we can view those later so uh that really helped us create our own our, our own schedule that's great that's great and and for for me for example we didn't i didn't have classes online so like for us it was a little bit different but the like again we're like as i'm talking these are three different approaches here so my approach like i'm a i'm like a very physical person and like i the way I deal with stress is I need to work out like that's just the way it works for me. So the way I set it up is I also like I like to get the things that are really important in my mind done first. So for me, the most important thing was uh, boards is priority. I need to pass boards. Of course, I need to pass classes, but I'm going to have to go to class. So for me, uh, it was waking up at like 630 or 7. And then the first thing I did was like, get something on and go to the gym or work out, like go for a run, have something set up, 30 minutes of movement. And then I would hop over and I would um, take care of question bank stuff. I'd go to question bank, I'd either be reviewing questions or I'd be doing my like my question block. And that's just like pure focus, like I just have to go into it. And I think the, the workout part for me was what helped get me moving and then get into that process. Then take a shower, go do classwork, and then at the end, it's like Anki cards, reviewing questions, um, you know, getting getting set up for the next the next thing, right? But in the evening, uh, to to Royce's point about the night stuff, I I crashed. I could not handle after like nine o'clock. I was done. Like there's just no way I'm operating um, at that at that space, right? So 
again, it's, there's just different approaches to how you're gonna set up your schedule and it's gonna have to be specific to you. The biggest tip I always get, give to learners is like, like just like we're three different personalities, you have to look back and you have to think like, how, who am I? Am I a procrastinator? Am I a uh, morning person? Am I a nighttime person? What are peak times? When I remember and retain information, what am I doing? Like, I'm sure there's times in med school you've performed really well on an exam and you retained a lot of that information. What were the practices you were doing? What were the habits that you were doing? If you weren't performing well or you thought you were going to perform well and you didn't, what were the practices or the things that you were doing that maybe didn't get you there? Um, and remember that for boards, it's not about winning one day. It's about having a consistent process over time because the consistent effort and the habits you're building over time is what's gonna get you through the huge amount of information. So we'll talk about that too in regards to mindset, but remember this is a marathon and not a sprint, although you do need to have some sprints in there to get through um, that question bank, okay? So, um, and get through all that material. So again, if there's any questions about that, please please plug them in, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, the other thing I'm just gonna, we're gonna hop over to now is um, we're gonna go over some basics. And what I mean by basics is all the little lifestyle pieces that we're likely neglecting during this time because we're super stressed out, but it's super important to talk about this in regards to the how you're gonna get through this process, okay? So let's start off with the one of the very basic things, which is water and food. So any, strateg any strategies, for, I know this sounds really funny, but is are there any strategies to hydrating properly and to making sure you're getting the right nutrition? Um, whoever wants to take it. Go ahead, Sean, you can start off. Uh, yeah, I think the, I honestly think the best piece of advice here is to kind of mimic as early as possible, start mimicking the exam. Uh, and, you know, with that, it's breakfast, lunch, and then dinner. And, you know, you're not going to be able to have a snack or water with you in the, the, you know, while you're taking the test in your cubicle. And, you know, what you can do is, but you do have scheduled breaks. So what you can do is, you know, eat light, which is my, you know, my big recommendation. You know, you if you eat heavy, you're going to just crash uh, and you're not going to be able to keep that, you know, laser focus for the day. Uh, so I think if you have a solid, uh, you know, light breakfast, and you know that'll keep you full until lunch that's something you should go to and um you know i always what i always did was you know i, I did an hour on and five minutes off so you know you just do an hour you sit down in the cubicle for an hour and then you can go for a five minute break and get a drink of water and then or a cup of coffee whatever it is get back in the you know the chair and study until lunch lunch have a light lunch uh, but never anything, you know, nothing junky, just try to keep it healthy. And, you know, you, what you eat is, uh, well, you know, you are what you eat, but you want to make sure that you're providing some good, uh, brain food, right? So you want to have some healthy stuff and, uh, make sure that you're not eating junk food and, uh, you know, that really light, that like a light meal really keeps you going. And, um, I think that's, that's huge, but really try and mimic that test day environment don't have a cheeseburger at lunch you know uh just try to really mimic that test day Bryce, what do you think yeah the only comment i have really for the hydration of food is the biggest thing is just do not have snacks laying around you when you're studying like when you're in your study mode like whether it be a bag of chips whether it be anything snack anything that's snackable just don't have it next to you a because you're just going to consume a large amount of calories just because and B, most likely, it's not going to be a healthy snack. Um, so, and it's not going to be practical, kind of like what Sean said. You know, it's not a practical test taking environment. So, that's my one kind of thought right there. So, food and water for me, um, I agree with everything that's been said. I think the big thing to remember is when you're super stressed, you're you feel crunched on time. But you got to remember with any of these basics we're going to go through, like just slow down for a second and realize if you do meal prep or if you go to the grocery store and you buy healthier foods for you, even if it's a little bit more expensive or what have you, um, long-term again, because it's kind of like the marathon you're going through, that's more important. Also, I'm a big fan of, especially on clinical rotations or for boards or whatever, 
is in the morning, right when you wake up and you get out of bed, go go and get a large glass of water. Like drink a good amount. Like get the bolus of uh, get that get that liter of fluid in anyway, but not not that much. But um, get get some water in because it's really important um, to to be ahead of the game than behind. Because if you're dehydrated, you don't know that you're dehydrated. Like most people, you don't have it's not conscious awareness. And that's super important. In terms of food, I, I agree with kind of what's been said. Keep it light. Um, have healthier foods. We all know what that is. No, no really heavy meals. Um, no sugars um, or, or you know, uh, highly, uh, you know, no like no snacks, no sodas, no these things. Um, unless like you really need it. Um, you know, like if you have to have a Coke every once in a while, no, it, that's not a big deal. But if you're if you're drinking. Um, you know, high sugary substances and foods all the time. As we all know, you're just going to crash. It's not healthy. You're going to feel sluggish. You're going to feel tired. And all that stuff is going to impact your memory and your thinking as well. So um, super important. Um, the other thing I want to kind of talk about, which is really important in tandem with a lot of this too, is um, like almost like study hygiene, which is main, mainly like how are you studying? Um, in terms of your position, in terms of your posture, um, in terms of like the physical act of it, what's your space look like? Like so, all those little things are really important. So, um, either you guys want to comment on just like the physical being of studying, if that makes sense. Go ahead, Royce. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, are you just talking about like the environment that you're in? Yeah, like environment, positioning, like that, like the physical part of studying. Like, are you slouched yeah. over the desk? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you know, it, that's a very good question. I mean, for me, my environment was very key. Like, uh, some people like to actually physically go somewhere, like a library and a cubicle. Some people like to go somewhere and like you know, right when you go somewhere, you're there you kind of have that change of mindset, like you're in the zone and then you leave, you're out of it. For me, I studied, I was in my house a lot, but like it was in my other side of my room, which is kind of weird. People tell you not to study in a room. But for me, it was like if I was in the one corner of my room with my desk facing the wall and with all my whiteboard stuff, that was where I was in the zone. But then when I kind of left, I was like doing my own thing, kind of relaxed. So for me, like I had a little kind of cubicle set up. And that's when I was in there, I was set, I was going in my grind mode, you know, doing my questions, I was focused. But then when I left, that's when I was, you know, doing my other stuff, so. Sean, how about you? You know, I like to classify, you know, I like to classify studying into like light studying and heavy studying. And I think that, you know, the light studying is kind of like if you're, you know, chilling in front of a TV, you're watching football, or you're just like lounging on bed and you're looking over notes, so that's light studying. But where I consider heavy studying is, you know, kind of separating yourself from your home or whatever environment that you're doing anything else and kind of create your own micro environment just for studying, where the only thing that you ever do in that one spot is studying. Kind of like what Roy said, I mean, he still, he chose a place in his house where no matter what, that one place is where he went to study. And that's, I think that's key. I really think that's helpful. And for me, it was the cubicle with headphones on, noise canceling headphones, no music, just silent, as little sensory, you know, input as possible. And I had, I mean, I never sat up straight. I know there's, there's some, so something about like standing up and like the super Superman kind of pose where you feel more confident if you sit up straight while taking a test. I think there is some, you know, proof of that. Um, I never, I never could do that. I was always too, you know, kind of like hunched over staring at my screen. Um, but, you know, find, find what works for you. I think when it comes to, uh, you know, studying for eight, 10 hours a day, whatever it is, you kind of want to make sure that you're not hunched over. So you're not, you know, having neck problems all the time. Uh, but, you know, it's something to be aware of, right? Maybe check in every hour and say, you know, where am I right now? Like maybe I should straighten up for a half an hour or something like that. Yeah, the, the reason I think this topic is super important and I, I agree with you guys, um, there's different ways of doing this thing. I, I don't know about you, but I've never, I never suffered from lower back pain until I started med school. And the, I don't know if you that happened to you guys, but like 
it's just constant sitting. You're sitting a lot, you're sitting and setting, you're always in the same position. So um, it was really important for me um, to constantly switch it up. Um, and again, that might be like a little bit of like my ADD kicking in or like I needed something else, but for me, it wasn't gonna work to sit at the cubicle or sit up, sit up at a desk and stare at the wall. That wasn't just gonna work for me. So I like in the morning, you know, maybe I had my setup at home at the desk, but then later I went to the library and I spent some time there for a little bit. Then maybe I was, um, you know, on my couch, laying on my stomach and on the laptop, right? So like I had to switch up positions. The really huge key thing for me that helped a lot actually was getting a therapy ball. So right now I'm not sitting in a chair, I'm actually sitting on a therapy ball. That's been huge for me because it activates the core. You have to stay a little bit more active and it's it's a really soft like cushion um, and that's done wonders for me. I actually still use that now in residency and in an outpatient. A lot of my patients ask me like, why the heck are you sitting on a ball? And I say, hey, it works for my back and it's done wonders for me. So um, I highly suggest finding those positions um, that are gonna work for you. If you're constantly slouched over on a chair and it's uncomfortable and your lower back pain or you're starting to get some pain or aches and stuff, that's a sign that your body is literally doing something. It's not supposed to be in that position for that long. There is no, if you look biologically and evolutionarily, there's been no time in human history where people have sat for eight, hour, eight hours plus per day. This is a modern problem and it's not anatomically effective. So, you know, we have to think about those things. We have to work with our modern day time and, and work with our physiology, but it's really important. Um, some people get standing desks. So that can really help too, if you guys can afford it or if you have that opportunity, having a standing desk can really help. Um, I know that there's, again, I'm not telling you to do this, but I know there's treadmills, treadmill desks out there where you literally have like a treadmill, you can go on a walk and you can have something set up. I know that there's a little bit of the whole like, you know, with the pandemic, the gyms, I'm not sure what's going on with that at your school or in your local area, but if you are able and you're, you're masked up and you've, you're, you're distancing properly and all those things, you know, going to a gym and maybe setting up your notes and just going for a walk and doing 30 minutes of reading while you're, you know, reviewing, reviewing Anki cards or flashcards or whatever you're doing, um, that's really important. And also just wanna emphasize here, like light exercise, light stretching um, throughout the day or at different times during the day, to switch up um, what you're doing. Because again, this is super important. And guys, this isn't just a mental race. It's a physical, it's a physical one. It's a, it's uh, it's, it can become spiritual. It can become all these different pieces and it's super important. I'm going to talk about like the different aspects of, of the other other things like relationships and family. Um, but it's super important to to be able to think about your your study environment in regards to how you're gonna tackle this thing. Because if you think you're just gonna sit at a desk for eight hours and do a bunch of questions, you're wrong. It's not gonna happen. If you do that, you're gonna, you're, it, 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 it's gonna be extremely tough and you're gonna be hurting yourself. So you have to be able to find ways of, of getting through this, um, you know, and be effective. So I don't, if there's any other questions on that, um, you know, just, just throw up the questions, we'll, we'll kind of get to it. Um, I want us to switch gears for a second. We're gonna go over to social. Um, I know it can be super, difficult to navigate um, family relationships during this time, um, your romantic relationships during this time, and um, you know, with your friends, and also like just your friends in medical school. So I'll kind of open it up to um, Sean and Royce, like how, let's go piece by piece though, um, but like how was it to navigate like the social aspect? Yeah, this is a very difficult topic, and I feel like not many people address this at all. And you don't really prepare or think about this until you're actually studying and dealing with these issues. Um, so I think, you know, the best way to be is just be honest with those close around you, the people that you normally talk to on a daily basis, right? So if it's your parents, your grandparents, your, your significant other, your really close friends, when you're going to study for boards, just be honest with them and say, hey, mom and dad, like, you know, I have one of the biggest tests ever in my life. You do understand that, like, you know, I love you and I want to talk to you every day. I do the normal things I normally do, but I'll be studying for this exam. It's going to be one of the hardest exams I ever take. And that, you know, I might have not have not have as much time to talk. And it's nothing against you. It's not like I'm mad at you. It's just something I'm really trying to focus on this exam. And, you know, they love you and they know it's important. They'll respect that. Um, you just have to be honest with those close around you. And most of the people understand. Some of the people who might not understand as much is maybe 
so, you know, that significant other who's not in the medical field per se might not understand, and that might be more difficult. But I always figure, you know, communication and honesty and openness is the best way to kind of really navigate these social interactions with people. Sean? Yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head there with, you know, family and, and the significant other. Uh, you know, another point I would bring up is just being on campus and being around others that are taking the test. And one of the ways that you can gauge how uh, you think you're gonna feel in this situation is how you are, you know, in the past with taking tests. You know, if you are nervous talking to people immediately before a test or immediately afterwards, then you're gonna be nervous, you know, talking to the people when you're studying for boards. And, uh, I think this this is really tough. This is a really tough time. It's hard to hear someone, you know, a group of people gabbing about, you know, I got a 90 or whatever on my test or I got 90 on my question set, whatever it was. And they may come up with you, you know, make him up with a, a question about, you know, uh, renal physiology to you. And you're like, oh, my God, I haven't like reviewed that yet. Like, I'm not ready for boards. And, uh, you know, and you have to realize that. I know that that's a that's kind of like a, a very specific situation, but maybe they have been studying kidneys for the past week and you just haven't gotten there yet. And, uh, you know, you have to just kind of take this into consideration. You, you have to take a step back and um, identify if you can be around people, uh, you know, talking about the test all the time. And um, I think. In this in this scenario, it's just it's hard because you don't want to isolate yourself too much. Um, but you want to be able to still talk to your friends and, you know, just like Roy said, just gotta be honest, you know, if they keep bringing up board stuff, then just say, can we just not talk about boards? Can we, you know, talk about anything else? Like what's been in the news? What's, let's talk about sports, whatever it is. Uh, but you just gotta be straightforward with them because everyone's going to be anxious. There's this cloud of anxiety that just you know, moves in when boards come around and uh, it's it's so hard to escape that that weather. So try your best to, again, not isolate yourself too much, um, but also just be honest and and have that open conversation. And and if they don't listen, then don't hang out with them anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm with uh, with both of you guys. Um, the honest, honesty is key in regards to like the, the friends and family and social situation. I think one of the awkward things that can happen is this weird competitive atmosphere that kind of happens and it has to do with um, a lot of the anxiety of the test. So sometimes when you're anxious, you part of you is trying to um, Part of you is trying to basically give yourself reassurance that you know stuff. So you might bring up things like a topic you just learned or whatever, but inadvertently when you bring up a topic you just studied, you're going to be freaking out your friend uh, potentially. It, it can be effective if you guys are doing group study, but what ends up happening a lot of the times is you, you were supposed to take a five to 10 minute break. You get into a discussion with someone, you start talking about it, and that five to 10 minute whatever side conversation you had with someone ends up becoming 30 minutes to an hour, and then you're completely off the schedule that you wanted to do, right? So I think it's really important to kind of just, when when it's focus time, it's focus time. Like this is your time to really do what you have to do, and if there's social time, then and then use that time. But I think what happens sometimes is uh, we can get distracted or ineffective. The other important thing is like, kind of talking about the the those relationships where people don't know, know what, how difficult this is, no one, this is the truth, no one will ever understand what you're going through if they haven't gone through it. So there is no one that will ever understand how hard it is to go through medical boards. Zero people that haven't done that, okay? So they're, they're not going to understand. And what you have to kind of explain to them is, hey, this is a specific thing that I'm going through. These are gonna be three to four months of very hard work. And I'm not gonna be able to give you the level of attention that I would normally be able to. Um, I think it's really still important to create a schedule or structure, especially with significant others and family members. But it has to be like, hey, hey, mom, like I really, I really only have five minutes, and I don't want you to be upset at me when I, when I, when I get off the phone. But, but a tip I would say is literally like start off the conversation with that, like, hey, I really have five minutes, but let's talk. But, but give them the five minutes and like be, be, be serious about it. 
Like I, you know, this happens all the time for work, right? Hey dad, like I got five minutes, but sure, how, how's your day going, right? And you have the real conversation. Like, you know, talk to your, your significant other and like let them know like I got 10 minutes, but I, I wanna hear about your day. Like be real, cause you do wanna set up the time, but also you have to set up those, those boundaries because if you don't set up the boundaries, um, they're gonna they're gonna take over and it's really important that you do focus. So um, yeah, I think I think all those pieces are are really important in, in regards to the social stuff. And then again, like if if you're more of a competitive person and for some reason talking to other people and uh, talking about what you just studied makes you feel better, sure, go for it. But a lot of people are really gonna behind the scenes dislike you if you keep trying to compete over them. If it's teaching and you're trying to teach a group and they want to hear that's fine, but nine times out of 10, when someone tried to teach me a topic, I wasn't even on that topic, and quite frankly, I'll get to it at some point. And so it really wasn't relevant for my studying, and so unless people are asking about it, I wouldn't just, I wouldn't just randomly come up with it. Like, I know it's great to like try to go out of your way to teach a pearl or an idea, and sometimes it's helpful, but nine times out of 10, it's not because you're on renal, and they're on GI, and they're not gonna, that sentence you just said is not gonna click. It's just not, because it's not relevant to the question sets that they're doing. It's not relevant to the work they're doing. So I just want to kind of put that into context that um, you don't want to be mean. Just just respect your time and create the boundaries. Um, if there's any other questions on the social aspect of it, um, please, please ask. And we'll, again, this is kind of a tricky thing. It's different for every person. There's different personalities and all that stuff. But I'm just trying to, you know, we're all just kind of trying to talk out like, um, you know, some general principles for this. Um, and then the other topic we wanted to talk about is um, perspective, like the perspective of what would be ideal for taking this uh, exam and the place you're in. Because I think what happens a lot in regards to your overall perspective, I don't know if you're spiritual, whether you're religious, what your belief systems are, but um, we're taking this exam for a, a specific reason. So guys, like what, what do you have to say in regards to keeping like a good perspective about like boards and, and medical school and all that stuff? Um, do you wanna go first, Sean? Do you want me to go first? Yeah, I can talk about this. Um, and yeah, I guess, I guess the big thing is, you know, making sure that you prioritize certain things in your life, right? And you know you want to keep the perspective of of boards is that you have to pass in this situation, but also you need to educate yourself as much as possible, and you need to be able to focus and have the discipline to you know really focus and prioritize studying for boards, and you want to make sure that you maintain that discipline throughout. Because you know this is you're, you're practicing you're practicing discipline for the future as well. I mean, you're going to be working really hard all day long, and really, this you know boards is training. It really is training. And if you have that that you know mentality where you know I'm I'm, I'm building endurance because as a physician I'm going to need endurance. Uh, you know, if you keep that in mind, where you're just if you're using this experience to grow and become better. I think you can really make a put a positive spin on this and try and keep a positive perspective and make sure also that you don't just lose the forest for the trees here. You don't want to just stay hyper focused and isolate yourself and just study the boards. You want to make sure that you can have you can still have that lifestyle and and you can remind yourself that you are a person and you're not just a robot or just a student isolated studying for boards, you wanna make sure that you have that life and maintain that life. So if you really keep that mindset and that growth mindset and the fact that you're, you're training and you're using this as a tool to be a better physician, I think that really is you know, a, a great perspective to have on, on, on boards. Bryce, what do you think? Yeah. Um, all great points. Uh, one of the things I thought of, like, some during the hard times of boards, because Bard, you got to recognize, like, you have to be really honest with yourself. Like, three to four months, this is going to be a time that's going to be really bad. You know, it's not, it's not easy. It's going to be the one of the hardest times in our career, and you just have to be honest with yourself and recognize it. But 
days when it was like kind of on the lower end, like kind of struggling, I'd really kind of think of like, sit down, take five minutes and think of why I'm doing this, right? Like, you know, there are people like would be dying to be in my position, to be in med school, to even take these boards, right? People who can't get in. And then B, like, why are you even taking the boards? A, to learn as much knowledge, but more importantly, to use this stuff to apply to your patients, right? And then it starts to start clicking. When you start studying in class, it might not make sense. And it's kind of like, okay, I just need to know it just to know it. But when they start doing it for boards, it's like, oh, shoot, that material kind of makes sense. And like, oh, that's pretty relevant for a patient. And it starts becoming like, oh, wow, this is kind of interesting. It kind of becomes a game. And it starts becoming like, wow, like this really, I could see how this applies to my patients or my future patients or to this. And then it starts to get interesting. And then by the end of it, to me, it was almost like a game. Like, oh, can you even trick me up anymore? Like, I know what you guys are going to do. Like, this is where you're going at. Like, so it started becoming fun. And to be honest, those three to four months were tough. But it was probably the most I have ever learned in a given period of time. And I probably learned more medicine during that time than I did, like, the first two years of med school. And it's kind of weird. It all kind of comes together during that time. At first, it doesn't seem like it. But you guys will understand, so. Yeah, that's, that's, those are really great points. And um, I'm just going to hammer home, you know, it's, it's just so important to have a positive perspective. Like it's, it's really important. And I want to bring this up because the hard times, you know, I'm about to finish residency. So I have a little perspective on this myself. The hard times don't stop. Um, and we're all going through a hard time right now with the pandemic and everything going on too, right? Um, so it's, it's not about the fact that hard times are present or that this, this period of your life is going to be hard. It's what perspective are you going to have on it? Um, it's, it's really important, just like Sean mentioned, to acknowledge that you're in a privileged position. Um, and also to Royce's, Royce's point too, like you're in a privileged position. A lot of people want to be in your shoes. A lot of people wish they could be studying super hard and preparing to become a doctor. Like this, this was, this is your dream. Like you didn't just apply to med school just to get in. You applied to med school to be able to have the privilege of putting in the work to become a doctor, right? You're taking the boards for the privilege of getting into residency. You're in residency for the privilege of becoming an attending, right? Like those are big shoes to fill, but, but that work is why when you look at the physician with that long white coat, you respect them because they, they, they put in the work, right? Now that work, you can't see the work, but um, you know, they got some, they got some deep soul guy in there, you know what I'm saying? In their brain. So I'm, I'm just telling you that, um, you know, we, 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 we are in a very privileged position to, to gain all this knowledge. And at the end of the day, you know, being in my position, finishing residency, um, I have a lot of medical students that come up and they're like, wow, you're so smart. And, and like, wow, I love how you taught this. And I'm just thinking to myself, I don't feel that smart. I don't really feel like, you know, I don't think I've arrived there. And I think that's the big point is um, I, I think we don't always respect how every step of the way, every little day we learn a little piece here and there. I don't think we always respect how, um, how, like how much knowledge we really know. And we don't get to respect like, wait, like I do get to learn very specified knowledge that a lot of people don't have. And I get to impart that to patients and to students and I get to help people optimize their health. Those are all very uh, amazing things. In regards to gratitude, I would also say that I'm a big fan of trying to say thank you to your life or some aspect of your life once in the morning and once at night. So if I could give you a prescription if you're listening or to my, to my boys here, Sean and Royce, try to finish your day. I don't care how terrible it was. Um, I, I do to some extent, but if you can try to find one thing that you say, you can say thank you to, even if it's simple, like I, I'm, a, I'm thankful I'm alive today. It was a really hard day, but I'm thankful I'm here. I'm thankful I have a bet. Whatever you can just put your, put your finger on and say, just thankful. And the more you can, use your gratitude muscle, the more you can put things into perspective. What happens in medicine a lot um, is we're taught to focus on diagnoses and disease. And so we're always, unfortunately, taught to focus on differentials and what's wrong with people. 
So what happens on a mindset level psychologically is if you're always focusing on looking at pathology and what's wrong, you forget to look at what's right, okay? So while we're all hyper-focused on looking at the wrong things, I want you to take a couple times during the day to think, look at things that are going right. Um, and I'll tell you, this stuff rubs off. You'll, you'll have better friendships, better relationships with your family, because people, people enjoy um, when you can stay positive. And it's, it's, a, it's a really um, uh, something that rubs off on people, and it's really important. The other thing, too, is when you are struggling, it's really important to um, use some positive language. For example, if you do a question block and you do poorly, use your perspective muscle. Say, you know, I did poorly, but luckily this is a question block. I'm going to use this as information um, to, to get better. You can do it. I can get better. I can learn this stuff. If you start to use the language like, oh, I'm so dumb, I'm so stupid, like what was the point of this? If you start using those, those words, that's gonna bring you down and it's not gonna help. Um, it's okay if you use it every once in a while because we all feel like you know not so good sometimes, but we gotta be able to switch it back up and, and, and use that kind of perspective and positivity to get through this. Because when you use those muscles, you'll be able to get through not just boards, but you'll be able to get through your residency more successful. You're gonna have those nights where you feel terrible and you have to find the inner strength, and so it's really important to use use what you have within you to get there. So uh, I'm a big I'm a big proponent of of using that positive mindset to help you get through those tough times. Um, and it's going to be a skill that's going to be applicable to every area of your life, um, and and is not specific to medicine. Um, with that being said, the other thing um, we, we were we we're taking some notes before this. Um, avoid. Sometimes it's okay to avoid people if they're really dragging you down. That doesn't mean that you completely stop talking to them. It just means that you have to be aware of your energy levels and your stress levels. And it's okay if you have certain relationships that you just need to focus less time on because um, you know your energy level right now is super key and it's really important. Um, another point in regards to perspective is you're going to be really stressed during this time uh, in the next like you know portion of time. And it's okay not to make big relationship or social decisions or life decisions during this time. Uh, your mindset during this time is gonna be particularly more stressed uh, than normal. So take it in perspective. It's okay not to make big decisions right now. And it's okay to pause on certain things that make you uncomfortable. If you're simultaneously going through this and you're trying to make a big relationship decision or something else is going on in your life, now is not the time. Now's not the time. Three to four months. Hey, look, I know we're having some trouble right now. Pause. Put the pause button up. I'm being serious about this when I say that because um, right now it's not. This is not going to be the normal you. The normal you is not this stressed out. Okay. Um, and and I can tell you after you finish boards, I'm sure Sean and Royce will agree with you. You start to feel like you can breathe again a little bit. Like you feel like that there's a little bit of a weight off your chest, right? Because that it's a crazy time. It's a crazy time. And, and we all know it. Um, so those are a lot of the main points that we really wanted to hit in this discussion. Um, I'm gonna open it up to um, any questions. Um, we also have a, uh, a question uh, spreadsheet that I'm gonna pop open here on my phone and uh, we'll go through it. Okay, um, let me just double check to see if there's any questions on the, the webinar form here. Um, any other points that uh, Sean or Royce you guys want to make, by the way? If not, it's fine. I'm just uh, I'm just buying time so I can open up the spreadsheet. <laughs> I did see a good yeah. question. Oh, I'm yeah, looking sorry. at the spreadsheet right now, yeah. looking at some questions. I know one good question yeah. I see here is, what is the maximum number of hours one should study a day to retain the most information? I have a, I think I have a good answer for this, but I want to hear what your guys' opinion. Sean, what do you think? You know, it, I think it's tough. I mean, I think that uh, you build this endurance. Um, I think at first, you know, it could be just four hours for you, but you can actually increase that time. You can grow to increase the time for, for maximum hours. And it depends on your sleep as well. Uh, you know, if you get a good night's sleep, you're going to be able to retain information better. I would say my number my number was always eight hours. I would something something about eight hours in my mind is really eight to ten hours is really the maximum number. Anything outside of that, and 
I think it's just, I mean, you're either you're not, you're doing light studying or you're not, you know, really focusing on the studying. But if you do eight to 10 hours of focus studying a day, there anything more, in my opinion, I, I think it's, there's, you're not going to be able to shove anything else in. For me, uh, maximum number of hours, I would argue, um, I would say that I can get a good solid three to four for myself in the morning. I can definitely focus for around that amount of time. And then after I do, and I'm talking about pure, like real, real studying, like basically like hour on, five minutes, 10 minutes off, hour on, five minutes, 10 minutes off, whatever, so on and so forth. After that, um, after those three or four hours, I will be pretty mentally fatigued. At that point, I will need to take some form of break. Um, and then when I come back in the afternoon or in the evening, um, I can probably crank out another uh, couple hours. And then after that, I really need to do 30 minute segments or an hour segments. So like for me, it's like my peak time is in Royce. I'm, I'm sure yours is flipped, right? But my peak time is right in the morning. And then as I start to go, I am my increments of study effectiveness. And I just like, I, I honestly just watch myself. I know that might sound funny, but I'm literally like in my head, like, I'm not retaining this right now, am I? Like, you know, there's a point where you have to notice, you're like, I'm just reading. I'm not even, this isn't happening. So I think it's just really important to check in and go take a break, do whatever. Because if you're not, if you're not focused, if it's not clicking, then you just have to, you have to go do something else. So it's really important to check in. But yeah, I don't have an exact time, but I just say like, I, I go in increments and and when, when I'm done, I'm done. Like I, I hit a point in the evening that's like, this is as much as I can go. Yeah, I think, Sean made a good point, kind of endurance. So when I first started out, I was getting good study, really retaining information, three to four hours of question blocks and going over the questions and such. And then like Taylor made a good point. I know it's a very good strategy is like study for a certain amount of time, take a break, study a certain amount of time, take a break. But for me, taking this break distracted me and I almost had to study just like crank all hours out at the same time I, I would get in these weird zones i don't even know what you would call it but i would just super focus and i couldn't get out and then once i get lost that focus like i was out of it and i had to like do a bunch of stuff to get back in that focus by the end of my board studying i'd get up to like 10 to 12 hours just being in these zones of studying really hard but it's endurance and you have to build up that endurance and one important tip i have to say is if you're not retaining it like you have to be honest with yourself if you're really not retaining the information, like just stop. Doesn't matter if it's one hour, doesn't matter if it's 12 hours. If you're not retaining it, just stop because you're wasting your time. You could be doing stuff like with your friends, social, having a normal life, or actually doing something to really retain the information. So like sometimes I'd be a late night person. And for some day I had a large hard day of doing something and I wasn't retaining stuff. I would just, you know, pack up my bags and start an hour early the next day. You know, it wasn't that much of a big deal. But if I knew I wasn't retaining information, that's a loss, right? I'm not really gaining anything from this. So, um, yeah, I, 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 that's a great question. I love that one. Um, so the first question we addressed: how how do you effectively study and balance? Um, what uh, this is a good one. What steps can I take now to avoid experiencing study burnout? Um, I I think um, I would say that it's really addressing a lot of the habits and the mindset and the routine type stuff that we've talked throughout this conversation. Do you guys have any tips on avoiding burnout? Do nothing at all. <laughs> That helps. That that I mean, do whatever <laughs> fills up your your bucket. You know, I mean, I think that uh, you know, burnout is just like this accumulation and this snowball of just neg negativity and and just kind of emptying the bucket and draining your energy. Uh, I think you know, for me, it's just I mean, literally doing nothing, just sitting on my couch and watching a s stupid movie or you know, just a ridiculous like Anchorman or something, just you know, silly to to laugh at and. You know, for me, that's that's something that fills up my, you know, my bucket or, you know, spending time with a loved one or with, you know, my fiance and just, you know, doing whatever we, you know, going out and going out to eat or just going for, you know, a walk or going for a hike or something. You've got to you've got to make sure that you do what you love and, you know, really just take it's OK to take a day. It's OK to take two days. If you're sick with the flu, take off. Don't study. Just take off. Rest. 
and get back to it because if you keep you know pushing yourself uh you know when you're when you're tired then you're gonna get burnt out so sleep get eight hours whatever it is sleep and find that thing that fills up your bucket and and do it continuously throughout studying Yeah, um, I think for me, it was making a really good schedule. Like for me, it's kind of like your schedule really makes your routine, which really makes your like life easier, right? Like you've built a routine since you're like four years old, brushing your teeth for two hours, like for two minutes in the morning, two minutes before you go to bed, right? It's not like a, you have to force yourself to do it. Now it's like become routine. So if you have a really good schedule of like when you're doing things, it comes, comes pretty easy to like, all right, I'm studying for this amount of time doing this. Then I'm, you know, calling my mom for five minutes doing this, you know, cooking for 30 minutes, exercising this time, doing my light studying with honky cars for this time. If you really can create a good schedule and good routine, it becomes second nature and it becomes easier on yourself. And I think that helps really prevent some of that burnout because I think some of the burnout comes from the uncertainty of like, oh, shoot, I forgot to study for an extra hour. Oh, I forgot to do this. I didn't do this. Um, I'm not really retaining this information, but if you make a good schedule, I think you really kind of accomplish all those things. So, Right. Yeah. I mean, these are all really great points. And I think burnout can also be specific to who you are as a person. And I think it comes back to kind of what we're touching on, which is what fills up your cup, what gives you energy. You have to find places that recharge you. Um, and so if you're not, I think a lot of people say like you lose a sense of yourself or you don't feel like a human or uh, medicine can dehumanize you or take take away from who you were before all this. And so it's really important to remember to do those things that made you feel human before. Like if you if you love playing music before, you know, pick up that guitar. Right. If you love to go to concerts, we can't do that right now. But maybe, um, you know, find some new artists that you love listening to music. Right. Like find the things that really um you know provide you some energy so um it, it'll be specific to you but that's really important um there's this uh this is a more of a specific question but i think it'll be i think it'll be good because we can address a few things here but any advice tips tricks for students with adhd i'm struggling with studying for boards and studying for classes i feel that i can only do one at a time and if i split my time i might end up failing classes uh, or exam. So um, I'll, I'll just take this one because I am a psychiatrist. <laughs> um, so ADHD is part of my bread and butter. I mean, first off, if you truly have ADHD, you can go and speak to a professional about, you know, ways to either have medication or methods of focusing. Um, I know a lot of people who claim they have ADHD, but don't. It's just that medical school is really hard and this has hit you in a different way. So it's important to get clinically diagnosed and and actually to know um, I always joke I have an ADD type personality but I can sit in front I can actually sit and study I just am like a hyper person and I have to be active right so it's important to really get clinically diagnosed but if you do it's really important to have the, the medication all that stuff the other thing to think about and this is a bigger picture is if you have any disability or any diagnosis or any medical issue please go to your school it is absolutely inappropriate for any school um, to not appropriately address or accommodate when there are certain issues um, that you need to address, right? No one's going to be upset. And this is the same with residency too, right? These are things you just need to be open about. No one's going to get upset if you need to have a little extra time or maybe um, there's an accommodation they can do with your coursework or spread out your clinical rotations. Maybe you have to graduate in four and a half years and not four years. Maybe you have to graduate in five years. Maybe you have to push some things back because you need to accommodate for issues that are going on. There is no shame in needing to push something back slightly in order for you to get to your dream and for you to be adequately prepared, right? So I, there is no, everyone thinks the pathway to becoming a doctor is linear. And most for most people, it's not. For most people, there are struggles. There are little speed bumps. And it'd be much better if you can appropriately get through your classes and study for boards and get through your clinical rotations and do it effectively. So the idea is always to be proactive, not reactive. And if you are struggling or you're worried about some accommodations you need, it's important to go see a physician. If you need those accommodations, get properly diagnosed, 
have the letter in place, you know, have a letter signed and written and discussed with a, you know, clinician and go talk to your school. All of those little pieces are going to be really important um, in order for you to appropriately address, address things. Um, and it, it looks like we've lost Sean, but that's okay. Um, and then the one other question I'll just get through really quick here is any good podcasts that you'd recommend listening to? And um, I think that's a good one to finish on because we're, we're going to plug in, um, we're going to plug in Med Flash Go. If you guys search MED Flash Go, Med Flash Go, all one word on um, any podcasting app, you can listen to um, Sean um, often or Percy is another member of our team. Um, and they're they're literally talking about one question every day. It's a question of the day podcast, and they're going to teach you important facts, gems, high yield information for boards. There's a little plug, um, but yeah. So that that's 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 all we got for today. And I really want to appreciate your guys' time. Thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you to the Med Flash Go podcast team, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. If you have any other questions, please contact webinars at truelearn.com. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you would complete the feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. On behalf of TrueLearn and our presenter, thank you for joining us today, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, guys. See ya.